we've had another burst of revelations and charges concerning the Korean intelligence and lobbying scandal. Big names in government have been thrown around. There are tales of $100 bills stuffed in envelopes, lavish parties at exclusive Washington clubs. In 1973, a D.C. socialite was caught at an Alaska airport with a list containing the names of over 90 U.S. legislators and dollar amounts next to each name, what looked like bribes delivered on behalf of the South Korean government. When Koreagate exploded into public view three years later, the Washington Post called it the most sweeping allegations of congressional corruption ever investigated by the federal government. And at the center of it all... The key operative, perhaps the most important unofficial link between the Korean government and the United States, was Washington businessman Tong Sung Park. In a city full of schmoozers, Tong Sung Park was one of the best. Raised in a wealthy South Korean family, he had arrived in D.C. in 1956 to study at Georgetown University. From the moment he stepped foot on campus, he was winning friends and influencing people. His freshman year, he was elected class president. His sophomore year, vice president of the Student Activities Council. By his junior year, president of the National Korean Students Federation. After graduation, Park turned his passion into a profession, opening a social club at 1530 Wisconsin Avenue Northwest. The Georgetown Club quickly became a destination for the city's most powerful people. Park rubbed shoulders with generals, senators, and even hosted the wedding rehearsal for President Johnson's daughter. But while everyone knew Park, few knew anything about him, said one club attendee. Whenever I asked what he did for a living, he would mumble that he was some kind of businessman, had something to do with rice. As it turned out, he was a businessman, of a sort. In South Korea, Park had made contacts with the Korean Central Intelligence Agency and the nation's authoritarian president, Park Chung-hee. The KCIA had made him the sole middleman in a lucrative rice trade between the U.S. and South Korean governments, an arrangement which made him $9 million in an 11-year period. In return, Park took some of that money and gave it to his many friends on Capitol Hill. This included vacations, dinners, and occasionally just envelopes full of cash. As Americans read headlines about South Korea's increasingly brutal regime, Park's job was to keep American support solid and billions of dollars of American aid money flowing. When the scandal finally broke in 1976, it seemed sizable. Park made a compelling story. The wealthy Korean socialite who hobnobbed with presidents, an agent of a foreign intelligence service? The Justice Department charged him with 36 felonies, but Park had already fled to South Korea. After over a year of negotiations with the South Korean government, the Department of Justice finally secured his return. They'd give him immunity if he'd named names. But when Park finally testified in 1978, he only implicated a handful of congressmen. Many had already left Congress, and only one, former Congressman Richard Hanna, a close associate of Park's, was convicted of any crime. One of the main reasons Koreagate fizzled was because many of his gifts weren't technically illegal. The cash envelopes Park provided to U.S. politicians were considered to be campaign contributions. And until 1975, it wasn't against the law for members of Congress to accept money from foreign nationals like Park, as long as they could claim they didn't know he was working for the South Korean government. Instead, the congressmen involved claimed that they were hoodwinked by Park and the KCIA scheme. There was no quid pro quo, and they weren't corrupt politicians. They were susceptible to the Korean hospitality. Combine that with the fact that South Korea remained a close Cold War ally, and that the KCIA itself was modeled after the American CIA, there were a lot of people in DC who wanted this to just blow over. They were only doing what we taught them to do, remarked one investigator. Ultimately, it was the Korean community here who bore the brunt of the consequences. As one community member stated, when Tong Sung Park was in the news, it hurt all of us. We had trouble getting jobs after that. Our children were teased at school. It was very upsetting. Tong Sung Park eventually did go to jail, but it was in 2007 for having helped Saddam Hussein's government in a separate, unrelated bribery scandal. For more DC history, check out our Boundary Stones playlist and subscribe to WETA PBS on YouTube.